Well, hello there and buona yesu asifiwe. What is up? <laughs> How are you doing? Karibu sana to have this conversation. My name is Brian Moshigadi and I am glad to be your host on today. Welcome back. I want to request you to please share this link with as many people as you can. Let them know that we are on and we're excited to be doing this to the glory of God. We have been uh, on a journey of Book of Jude. We started last week. We went through the introduction and the introduction itself was straight fire. If you were here, you know what I'm talking about. I want to also let you know that um, we're going to be doing this for a while. So please feel free to reach out and grab your Bible. Or if you can multitask, you can use your Bible on your phone because it's not Bible study if you don't have your Bible, right? So if you can get your Makaratasi Bible, it will be so much better, like your hard copy Bible. Um, but if you have the technology, the iPhone, the iMac, the Mac, I, what that, you know, the, <laughs> your phone, my phone, whatever, uh, you can use that as well. Um, yeah, but Karibu, Karibu Sana, it's happy, it's, it's happy, we are happy to have you here on today. We want to get right into the content of it in uh, the studio today, or on set, I have uh, two guests that I had last time, uh, they introduced themselves, and they told us a little bit more uh, about themselves, and so you can go back to that video and check it out, but we have Pastor Jack from uh, DC Kahawa West, and we have Pastor Shad from DC Kahawa Sikari. And um, Niwa Babas, Wakona Mabibi, na Wakona Watoto. Yeah. Uh, na tunashukuru mungu. Kwa kwe. Na shukuru mungu. Na shukuru mungu. Yeah. Ni necessary. Kusama hivyo kwa the man of God. The anointing. The anointing. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, we want to get right into this. So, um, previously... On the book of Jude, okay? We went through the um, introduction. We looked at who wrote this. Jude, the brother of Jesus, the half-brother of Jesus. We also looked at um, around when it was written from like 60 AD to like 85, 85 AD. It was after Jesus' death and ascension, okay? And then we also looked at um, who it was being addressed to. And together with the um, people that were, it was being addressed to, actually, it says to the called, the beloved, and the preserved or the kept by God. So that same for them, same for you as well here and today. We also looked at why he was writing to them, um, which is he was writing to them for a certain reason. He actually was going to write to them about, con um, not contending, he was going to write to them about the common faith, this faith that we have in Jesus Christ. But then he was anxious and he released uh, whatever, he relinquished whatever rights he felt like he had as a, as a writer, or as an author of the word to write what he wanted to write at that time. He relinquished those rights to the Holy Spirit. He ceded ground so that the Holy Spirit can allow him and lead him into this area of need, which was now for the reason of contending for the faith, which is where we want to get into right now. Um, so, yeah, contending for the faith being um, the reason why Jude is writing to us. And so I want to start with that question as we're talking about contending for the faith. I know it's a common, common uh, uh, phrase uh, in Christianese, contending for the faith. But let's try and break it down because that's a good thing about Bible study. What does that mean, guys? Um, what, what does it mean? What is contending for the faith? Um, explain it. Contending for the faith for dummies. Karibu. Contending for the faith for dummies. <laughs> one one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, well, it's, it's quite a large. Are topic. the dummies here or listening? Uh, no. Uh, that, <laughs> that, wow. Um, <laughs> so that, um, yeah. it's, it's good to just <laughs> clarify these things. On set, we have no dummies out there as well. We have no dummies. <laughs> Thank you. So like, the dummies for like, you know, they like, okay, for children. Yeah, yeah. I that's not a better word. You know what? Contending for the faith 101. Yeah. Let's do that. That's a yeah. better word. 101. <laughs> right. Much better. They're going to edit out that part for the dummies. Please note, okay? <laughs> 101. Simple. A okay. contend... Sean. A, yeah. The contending thing is actually a fight. So we can actually call it a fight for this faith mm -hmm. against what? Now that's the question. Who are we fighting against? Mm -hmm. We are fighting, I've just remembered a scripture that probably Shad will be talking about a bit later. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's a fight against all these things that are literally fighting against our faith. Mm -hmm. So we are, it's a struggle. And uh, really, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood when you're mm -hmm. coming to this faith. 
Um, but I guess all those things that have been written down in Philippians chapter, Ephesians, Ephesians. chapter six, yeah. you, you know? So the contention really is a struggle yeah. that we are, um, there is need for a Christian. Um, there, is, there is a responsibility that we have as Christians to, to keep this faith. And to keep this faith means that we've got to struggle against anything that rallies itself up against this faith. Mm. And that's, what God, that's why we are calling it a con, uh, contending against the faith. Mm. Of course, particularly in Jude, we are talking about one area where we ought to contend for the faith mm. uh, for. And um, I'm going to allow Shad to talk about, uh, I'm sure he's going to be talking about um, uh, Second Corinthians chapter yeah. 11. Was it Second Corinthians chapter 11? Actually, before chapter that. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Sure, sure, yeah. go ahead. Before that, yeah. I thought First Peter chapter All right. 3 verse 15 yeah, sure. would um, be a good place to start. Yeah. It says, but in your heart, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense yeah. to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness yes. and respect. And then verse 16 says, having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. And so... My definition of contending for the faith would be defense, um, giving a defense for what you believe, apologia, apolo apologetics, giving a defense for what you believe. And so Jude is telling the, the believers, the beloved, them that have been kept, them that have been called Christians to um, give a defense for what they believe. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, giving a defense for what they believe. Yes. So contending for the faith, what, what Jude is calling us to do then is to be able to, to understand, first of all. Yes. And then to be able to give a defense. Yes. So why, why do we need to give a defense? Okay. Because you, you put up a defense... Um, if something is under attack, yeah. I would imagine. Yeah. So, talking about the faith, and um, from what Jude is talking about, yeah. where is that coming from? It, yeah. Because it doesn't look like it's just coming from nowhere. He's not yeah. just saying, especially because it's inspired by the Spirit, he says um, he's now compelled to write about this mm. thing. So, what, what is that about? What is the attack? Where is the attack? What is, why are we contending? Okay. Yeah. Right. I think I had mentioned it in our introduction last yeah. week. We said that there was a group of people that were creeping into the church and propagating things that were false. And so when Jude is telling these guys to contend for the faith, contend for what they believe, they were to defend them that have believed from allowing these false teachings and false teachers to destroy the foundations that had been built and mess up the church by then. And so um, why is Jude contending for the faith? And so because there is, it destroys, it destroys church, it destroys unity, it destroys um, the, it, it shipwrecks, shipwrecks faith. Yeah. yeah. Like Paul would say in the book of um, Timothy when he's talking about Himalayas and Philetus, he says, Manze, their faith has been shipwrecked because of these false teachings that are going on. So it brings division in churches. And so Jude is guarding this church, these people, from experiencing the effect of false teachers and false teaching. Yeah, by telling them to guard and defend themselves. But I love what, something that you've said. You, you only guard and defend what you know. Yeah. So that it is very easy for us to fall prey to things because we do not know any better. I, I, I love the, 
what he says in, in, in verse 3, and if you'll allow me, I will read. It says, Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. So, he, Jude is telling these guys that we are writing because of the faith that was once delivered, because of what you once believed. And it is once. It's interesting how it's done, man. It, it was said and it is done. Now all we can do is just propagate it and defend it from um, false teachers. And uh, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, the one I just quoted um, last week, says about if anyone comes to you preaching a different Jesus and yeah. a different gospel, this is the foundation. This is what was presented to these friends long ago. And so Paul, uh, Jude is telling them, contend for this. And he says the reason why they need to contend is for certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago are designated for this condemnation, ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. We've realized the reason why. Because there is these guys. These guys who've come and they are propagating things that are not true. Because of these guys, because there is need, please contend. But then, our defense comes from a point of understanding. We have this faith that was given to us through Jesus Christ. He died on the cross, saved us so that we can be his people. With that understanding then, let's respond against anything that wants to distort this message. That's what Jude is telling these guys that are listening. Yeah. yeah. So, um, in, in what we read uh, in, in 1 Peter 3, verse 15, starts by saying, but in your hearts... Uh, honor. Yeah. Honor, uh, sanctify, set apart yeah. um, Christ as Lord. Yeah. Yes. You know, um, it says acknowledge him yeah. as Lord. So yeah. that's where it starts. Yeah. The place for contending for the faith we're saying then starts by acknowledging him. So that means this this um, arguments that we have going all around when, you, when you're meeting with people who are trying to, to somewhat, it looks like they're defending the faith, but they are not believers really. Yeah. That's we are saying that's useless. It's, that's not contending for That's not contending yeah. for the faith. You can't yeah. contend for something that you don't have. You don't believe. Yes, you can't. In yourself. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually thinking, I, I love the word you've used when you're defining uh, contending. It's, it's a guarding. It's a defense. And um, think of it as a wrestling match or whatever it is that you want to defend. Or um, a house that you want to defend against an outside attack. Um, that you, you've got to be in a place where you understand what you have, understand the value of what you have, the value of what you have been given through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. So that in understanding who you are and what Christ has done in your life, you, you, you get to know that this cannot come in and steal what has been, what has been given to me. And, and that's what really con contending is all about. That mm. you, 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 real, you realize it's two things realizing who you are and what the thing that is from outside can do to what you have been given. And, and, and totally, I, I know we all agree that this salvation has been given to us and um, it has been given for free, like by grace you have been saved through faith, but then we can actually lose it along the way. And one of the ways, and the reason I think why Jude is totally, totally serious about writing about this is because he, he knows the effect. He knows, he, he knows what false teachers can do. Mm. He knows that if belief is touched, if creed is damaged, everything else falls. Yeah. Every, every other thing that, all your character, all your conduct, all, 
all your lifestyle, your Christian lifestyle and everything, it falls. Yes. It crumbles by the effect of disbelief. And disbelief simply comes through false teaching. Mm. And, that, and that's what Jude is, is up, up against. And I think it's something really important, especially for the church today. Yes. Yeah. So you can, like, you cannot, you cannot lock up your gates to protect something that you don't have. Or you don't value. Or you don't that, value. That, that you don't value. Yes. I think that's, that's yeah. actually, you could have it, but you don't value yeah. it. So you could leave the doors open. Yeah. I think you don't value is important. That's yeah. really powerful. So what sets me to, to already start thinking, what do I value in my life? Yeah. Um, mm. And mm. The, the answer will not be from my mouth. It will be from the practice of my life. It yeah. will be seen from the things that I am doing. By your fruit. By, that's right. Yeah by the way I carry out my life, by my conduct, yeah. it shall, it shall, other people are able to, to know, you know, like we sh they shall know that we are Christians by our love, yep. by our conduct, that we carry ourselves out, the, the fruit that we bear. Um, uh, we were saying a, a few days ago, just this, this past week, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, then it is a duck. A duck. You know, those, those things about our everyday, ordinary life, the, the, the Bible would put it that way in, in Romans 12, in the message paraphrase. Uh, everyday, ordinary life they will tell us what we value uh, because that's what we lock up. Those are the places you don't want anyone to touch. You no. don't, don't touch my family. You could say you're an amazing family man, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> anyway, um, so contending for the faith and that's yeah. where we are at why contend because there seems to be people that have come in and there seems to be things that are being passed around um around the room you know mm. uh things that are being passed around the church and the body of jesus christ the congregations at that time and the the family of believers there are things that seem to be going around and like we said it it it, it was it was necessary back then and it is necessary even today because the things that were being passed around have not stopped to be pass, passed around. So what does that, what, why should we contend today? I think let's, uh, something Shad talked about earlier, talking about, um, in, in last week's, talked about um, the 21st century, it being relevant for us in the 21st century. Yeah. So why should we, why is it necessary for the 21st century believer yeah. to contend? Oh, yeah, I'm, there is need. <laughs> <laughs> there is so much need to contend for for the faith right now. Um, man, we live in a very pluralistic culture where there is so much relativity. Like your God doesn't necessarily have to be my God. What is right for you doesn't necessarily apply for me. And there is so much... Um, of um, um, what ideologies and philosophies that are against the Christian belief. Uh, just to mention a few, um, these things about the New Age movement that is creeping into the churches, where we have Christians who are all about positive thinking and um, positive waves and positive vibes and energies and, and Christian yoga and meditation, things that are not biblical. There is um, atheism. That is something, a problem right now in Kenya. Um, there's Hinduism and Islam, which has been the biggest, actually, one of the biggest um, movements yeah. that is against the Christian faith. And I think so much is happening. We have secularization of schools. And so there is reason to defend the faith. And again, we have false teachers who are among the Christians. Jude would say they feed with them. They are among them. But then are set out to destroy what the Lord is doing, and so I think there is reason to defend yeah. um, the faith in our generation against the philosophies and the worldviews that are coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think um, I, I totally agree. Yeah. And I think really the the idea around all those philosophies mm -hmm. is that God is among Almighty God 
is amongst other gods. Mm -hmm. Like, you serve what you want to serve. I will serve what I want to serve. Mm -hmm. Like, um, deity has been beca has become so as a, again how how you put it, relative to what you believe and what I believe. Mm. And and uh, for the Christian, the place of God and the authority of God is day by day being degraded. Mm. That that a Christian will look at God not the way the Bible looks at God. He will look at God the way a person a person tells them to look at God. Mm. So again, the God stops becoming the one who rules over the affairs of men. God starts becoming now the person who is your go-to guy when you are in a certain issue. Yeah. Like the thing, God serves me. That's, mm. that's, that, that's the point of, and again, that's new age movement yes. has a lot to do with that that God is there to sort me yeah. when I am in need of a thing. Number yeah. two, that there is that idea that God, the, all these things want to elevate my position above God so that mm. I self becomes God and Almighty God becomes a thing that serves, serves my interests. Yeah, yeah to, serves he my interests. He exists for me. Exists for me. For me. Yeah. And that's, that's the point of this whole thing. And so when Jude writes this, he understands that this is, a, this is what false, actually in belief, the false, in practice, the false teacher elevates himself above, and you'll see when we go through that, above who God, God. is. Yeah. And he says, I am the one to control. I am the one to say, I am the one to do. Wow. And that's the point. That's, that's what Jude is really contending for, that yeah. put God in his place. Yeah. And, 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 and everything else will yeah, it actually yeah. reminds me something that we read in First Peter. It says the the the, the genesis of defending yeah. the faith starts with honoring Christ. Yes. Uh -huh. So so that when you have him in his place, then you can respond to these things. Yeah. But then what the false teachers are doing is vice versa. They have rebellion against him. They hate authority, and so they are doing their own things for themselves to creep into the church and destroy what is already happening to um, confuse, to shipwreck the faith of others. And that's, that's, that's what really the false teachers and these ideologies are doing. We have men who, for, for actually someone to think that they can wake up feeling positive and to expect positive things is to actually think they can create with their minds. Which again is God's work. It's a, it's, it's, it's a God thing. It's a God thing to create. It's a God thing to create. So for anyone to think they can change a situation just because of how they feel is to elevate yourself to a level that you're not. Let, let me jump in there. Um, these things are there and they will continue to be there. Yes. We can only expect that as we draw towards the end of time, that they will only continue to abound. Yeah, absolutely. Because the, that's what the enemy is yeah. a deceiver. Yeah. 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 So, um, I'll, two questions. Mm -hmm. um, there's a thought that, okay, they, they will continue to abound. So, mm -hmm. number one, uh, how, how do I know what not to follow? These philosophies and ideologies and the movements, how do I know what not to follow? I know you mentioned something along the lines of um, fast, you, you, you know, exalt, sanctify him as Lord. And, yes. you know, yeah. the place of honoring God comes mm -hmm. first and then I'll know how to deal with the other things. So how do, how do I know what not to follow? Or why, how do I know what to follow? Because if I know what to follow, then I know what not yeah. to follow. Yeah. And then um, just as, okay. we, as we come to that, um, uh, we could answer it together. Yeah. The thought should be, you, you, you see a lot of us, um, and when I say us, us, I mean, you know, young believers, we, we, we are well-meaning. We do not to grow, not to grow, to poor. We mm. do to God, not mm. to, you know, for vibes now, mashallah. You know, we just want... There he goes. <laughs> I knew it was coming somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we just want. What did you just say? <laughs> I'm speaking for the masses. Okay, okay. okay. that's the masses. Okay, okay. guys. 
Like, yeah. So, we are well meaning. Yeah. So, the question in our heart is. This guy, even this guy you are selling me, this one is a false teacher. Yeah. I, I know way. <laughs> What's in it for them? Why would anybody want to be a false teacher? Yeah. So that's the other question. Because yeah. I think if we understand why anyone would want to be a false teacher, then yeah. we wouldn't shield or defend mm -hmm. the false teacher mm -hmm. or, or even the false doctrine. Mm -hmm. Why would anyone want to lie to me? Yeah. Surely, they, I'm only being a blessing to them. I'm blessing their ministry. Or, oh, yeah. Or I am buying into... You. <laughs> Why would anyone want to take advantage? These guys are lying. Yeah. Uh, no, you guys. Yeah. Uh, you, you guys must be... Uh, we, we, we are lying. Yeah, yeah, so that's the question. Sorry. I think, mm -hmm. number one, mm -hmm. how do I know what to follow mm -hmm. or what to stay with? And mm -hmm. then number two, why, why would anyone want to lie to me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, how do I know... Let, let me maybe uh, yeah. jump in and answer the first question. How do I know what not to accept? That's a question, right? Mm -hmm. um, let me give an example. I was given this example by, uh, by someone who, just absolutely amazing example. Now, um, before this, this is, it, is it my, my machine is in a sabungi pesa ko bank Those machines, those things. Um, uh, Did you just call them krr <laughs> machines? <laughs> Does anybody know the name? Uh, just leave them. A name, yeah. just, you've came, someone Google that name and You've created know? the picture. Yeah. They know. Yeah. We continue. <laughs> just like See those machines, before they came, the, the, uh, the bank tellers would, would hold notes, like a bunch of notes, and would just, ta -ta 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 -ta, just count them. And with super speed, mm -hmm. you know, and just count them. And all of a sudden, she would, or he would do that. That means that's a fake note. Like, cha 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 What's happening here? Um, and the guy was saying, you see, the bank teller has not been trained on what is not false. What is, this is a fake thing. Mm. He, has, he, he has not been trained on touching and realizing that this is fake. Mm. He, has, he has been trained on touching and realizing that this is the real thing. You see? So whenever, that's, that's, that's all he does. Mm -hmm. Because there are many forms of fake. Mm -hmm. There are many forms of things that mm. are not right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Come out. Um, so, so when this guy is, he touches and he realizes, true, 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 that's false. Mm -hmm. You know. Then he continues, da, 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 false. A different, two different kinds of false. Mm -hmm. But he, he doesn't even care mm -hmm. what kind of false, as long as it is false. Mm -hmm. so, and that's that's the way. And 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 the, and I think Jude says the same thing when we are ending that conversation yeah. in, in Jude, verse number twenty. Mm -hmm that my advice to you stick is to stick to the truth yeah like grow in this faith yeah that's that's how you know this is false yeah by sticking to the truth yeah i think yeah. that's that's uh, just to add something man i think when paul and i go back to second corinthians uh, 11 when paul is telling these guys that you know man i have let me just speak like fools and just say, you know what? I betrothed you to one, 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 one master one, one, our one, Lord one, Jesus Christ. Yeah, one husband, and some, some guys are coming and they want to deceive you. And he tells them, if anyone presents a different Jesus, yeah. a different gospel, a different That's spirit, true, yeah. this is what it means. They may come in very many forms. But if they miss out on this, if they miss out on Jesus, if they miss out on the gospel, if they miss out on the spirit, that's fake. They may actually get it 90%. But if they miss out on Jesus, 5%. That's... The spirit, 1%. The gospel, 0.009%. Mm. This is That's false. Fake. So that the discernment that we need in this age and time mm. is to discern what is almost true from the true. Mm. So that the devil knows his craft. Mm. He has mastered the art of lying. He won't just come with a fake note. He will fake it 0 0.00. Yeah, you know? The accuracy will be so good, it will take you years to know mm. that this is fake. Yeah. A friend of mine was giving me a story of a guy who um, 
was one of the richest people in the US. Um, some time ago, he lied to everyone that he had an investment company in some place, in some island somewhere, and investors pumped money until years later, about 20 years later, the FBI is trying to search for this bank and they can't find it. Credibility, he sold a fake thing and they bought it. And that's what the devil does. He won't come to us dressed like a sheep, what Jack was saying, dressed like, like a, a wolf. wolf. No, he'll come in sheep clothes. And he will have such nice fur, you touch it and it is all fluffy and you like it. This is his you own. actually this want to sleep next to it and then it divorces you. <laughs> That's the lie. Yeah. So that you will not even know when you lost it. It seemed good until it started biting. Mm. That's the danger of the false teacher. He eats with you. He is with you. And then slowly by slowly, he moves you further and further it's from you. the master. Yeah. yeah. And then divorce you. Listen to me, guys. Yeah. Listen to me. It's a real tears in my eyes. That is so good. I mean, so just stick it out with the real. Stick it out with Jesus. Just the way to know the real from the fake is to spend time with the real and not the fake. Absolutely. Because the fake will come in many forms. Yeah. Come in many forms. But the real is real. Yeah. The there's, legit there's is no the... Is, there's, no Ooh, there's no two types of real. Yeah. It's... Ni legit. Ni legit. legit. Business legit. Business. <laughs> Business legit. <laughs> if it's real, it's real. And yeah. that's, I feel, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like it takes the edge off of me as a believer to have to master all these false things. Yeah. Because it's so heavy to try and understand all the, to try and understand all the false doctrines yeah. and all the false, all the new age things and yeah. the, what did you call it? Progressive something. A progressive Christianity. Progressive yeah. Christianity. I mean, if it's progressive, it means it will continue to progress. Now, who has the time to run around that progressing thing? It's, it's just I like mean, fashion and trends. It, it you, keeps changing. Yeah, and Nothing you're not able legal. to keep it's up just... with it. If I have to keep up with it, it's expensive. <laughs> yep. And I will never settle. You will never settle. But if I just... Stick with Jesus. Stick to the truth. Yeah. The old ragged cross. I was oh, about yes. to say old fashioned, but yeah. yo, just stick, just stick with him. I know, I know the problem with mm. uh, maybe someone who's listening to mm -hmm. us this today. The, the problem might be, um, yo, you, you, and I guess we'll handle it uh, later. You're telling me to stick with Jesus. I have stuck with Jesus. Yeah. And I'm still falling prey, probably. To Actually, these guys. they have him, quote unquote. And that's where we are. But you see, the problem is what was presented to us is not the legit thing. So that the legit, it's like if, for example, you bought a phone, it has everything, Apple, even that guy, Apple, Apple. at the back and it is beaten at the right place. It's not, <laughs> <laughs> it's not under, just the right, just place, the right the, place, the right biting, the right size, you know. It will be very hard for you to realize that you are duped until you've interacted with a nice iPhone and realized it makes <laughs> like a strange a noise. This What's one, going this, on? Why is this sounding like I tell? I tell. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. And you see, that's the problem. Yeah, our foundation. Yes. Most of us, our foundation was false. Was false. So you think of it as legit, man. Me na kwagam legit. Uh, my ministry, we, my we service. We had a, uh, a cracked thing from the very go. From the very go. Did you say cracked? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> it was a crack. Yes, it, it was it was the original uh, with a crack. It. Yes, it it missed something, and so you now don't understand no, that's how it, it is yeah. that you. And every time you read the word of God, because we will keep telling you, go back to the word of God. The word of God has true. And you go back to the word. You will read the word of God, but but with the perspective. Of the one who told you about Jesus. Yeah. 
And so you, it will keep up coming up. It, the same thing that we are telling you not to get from scripture, yeah. it will keep telling you. Uh, but because every time you read it, the interpretation isn't from the Holy Spirit, really. Yeah. It is from the man who introduced to you Ooh. this mm. guy. I, I want us to, I want to, the director is saying my time is up. Okay. But I want, to, to, I want us to finish it right there yeah. uh, for today yeah. by helping someone who is watching. And that's their thing. They've mm -hmm. been saying, I've been, I've been reading the word. Yes. You guys are saying, I've been reading. Yeah. I've been sticking around Jesus. Yeah. I've, been, because yeah, I've, that's, been, I've been going to Keshas and yeah. conferences. And that's what was stuff. introduced to yes. them. Yeah. Yeah. So how does that person actually now begin to get it right? Let's, let's, let's land it there. <laughs> <laughs> My Bible has even fallen down. Let me tell you guys, that is the place to start. Yes. The realization that, you know what, I might be wrong. That's the best place to start. And when you get there, oh, what a blessedness. when you get there, my friend, what a blessedness. ask the Lord, Lord, you know what, I do not understand this thing. Yeah. Please teach me. Teach me your word. Let me give a, my example. <laughs> I was lost in the prosperity world. Oh, man, I, I, I keep sharing this and say and tell people, man, I would be I would make a very good prosperity preacher. Ngamoya. Ngamoya. <laughs> but you know what? I went to a certain um program and the preacher read to us a text that I had heard so many times. But then this time around, the brother allowed the text to speak for itself. And I was shocked. I wondered what, but, I've, but I know. And when I was sharing with one of the facilitators, they told me, you know what? Just allow the Lord to, to reveal to you his truth. Let him um, uproot all the things that you thought you knew. Ask him to help you unlearn all the things that you thought you knew and allow him to teach you afresh. And that was the beginning of my transformation. Realizing that the Bible is not about me. Do you know how easy it is for us to think that every promise is about a, you know, the yeah, Bible is not about it's, you. It's easy because of the foundation. Yes. It's always easy yes. because it's not about me. <laughs> the Bible is not about you. The Bible is about God. Yep. It is his story. Mm. Every time you've read the word of God and you felt, wow, okay, yeah. Something is amiss. Allow the word of God to have life in you. Let it reveal to you who God is. And slowly by slowly, you will start seeing the right thing. So I'd say, if you've been doing some devotion by someone, Rhapsody of Realities, quit it. Just read the word of God. If you've been doing some things because some people are telling you to do them, quit it. Just read the word of God. An interesting theologian says something. He says that the word of God is so shallow that a two-year-old can swim, and yet too deep that theologians spend wow. years and never get to, to, the, the, depths to the depth of it. Yeah. Let allow, let's allow him to... Let, let's allow the word of God to open itself to us. The Bible would say in the book of uh, Psalms 119 verse 18, the Lord opened my eyes that I may behold the wonderful things that are in your law. Yeah. And that's the prayer that you need to make. Lord, open my eyes that I will behold these wonderful things. And you will realize that when you have Jesus in his place, life becomes better. Yeah. Listen, guys. You just answered the second question, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. We've just answered it. Those are, those are two yeah, yeah, questions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to ask Pastor Jack to, to pray for sure. that person who is at home and that's what they've been feeling and now they are ready to accept that they are wrong and then just allow the Lord to lead them because they realize now the Lord is available. Pastor Jack. Let's be in prayer. Heavenly Father, I'm praying for our listener here today. 
that God, as they listen to the word of God, really not about our own kinds of wisdom and how we present the word of God, but really as they listen to your spirit convicting them, that, Father, you shall change the attitudes of their hearts and that, God, they shall stop doing some things that really are products of the foundation that had been set in their lives and that, God, you shall cause them by your own power and by your own spirit and the Lord you shall disturb them so that they can come to know truth. Lord, you are, you are so right, Jesus, when you said that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. God, I pray that, Father, for my brother, my sister who's listening to uh, this being aired, O oh God, that, Lord, you will change them. And that, Father, you shall, by, your, by the power of the Holy Spirit, come um, and make them true disciples to follow the truth and to follow your ways all the days of their lives. I thank you and I bless you for what you are doing in this place. Be glorified and be lifted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, guys. I um, want to put a pause in it there. Just a pause. We're still on contending for the faith and why we need to contend. We're going to take a break and then we'll be back next week with more of this. Continue to send in your questions. If you have any, let us know. Then the gang will come again and we're going to have a session of just answering these questions. Until next time, God bless. Baraka. <laughs>